Okay, I'm Tom Skase, one of the pre-sales consultants with AppSense. Today I'm going to talk to you about how Application Manager product works. The Application Manager product works with a method known as Trusted Ownership Checking. So what's Trusted Ownership Checking? Well, because of NTFS permissions, Every single file on your Citrix servers, terminal servers, desktops has an owner. So every single executable on your Gold builds has an owner. If you follow best practices and installed the operating system, all the applications that you want your users to have access to using a single installer account, then every single file on your Gold build will have the owner of that installer account. So then you let your users loose on those endpoints. A user then logs onto uh, uh, one of the desktops, let's say, and acts as an executable that's been installed by uh, the administrator. Because we follow best practice and install this application with a, a tr what we class as a, a trusted owner, so the administrator's account for instance, when this user runs this executable, runs this application, the application manager product intercepts the request for the executable to be processed, and before it actually hits the processor for actual processing, the, tr the actual uh, application manager does a process known as trusted ownership checking, and what we basically do there is check who the owner of the file is. So who has installed the product, who has introduced the executable into the environment. If that is part of the trusted owners list, the owner of the file, which as I say can be determined or added to and edited within the application manager console, which does come with an out of the box config. If the owner of the executable is part of the trusted owners list, which in this case it will be because it's been installed by the administrator, the executable is allowed to launch. We then look at a user introduced executable. So this is exactly why Application Manager was, was designed. So we're only allowing executables to be run that have been introduced or installed by an administrator. Goal build is the only thing that we're going to, executables we're going to allow to run. Anything user introduced we want to block. So what that means is we have another executable. Let's just say now a user runs an executable, whether it is uh, virus.vbs whether it's itunes.msi. All we're concerned about is anything that's going to execute at the processor level. Because the user has introduced this executable, one way or another, doesn't make a difference to us, we're not concerned of what the actual executable is, what the actual payload of the executable is, whether it is virus, whether it is something just a very innocent installation, all we're looking is to see who the owner of the file is. If the owner is part of the trusted owners list, we'll allow the executable to run like we did with the word.exe, but because it's a virus.exe or VB script, anything MSI, anything they've downloaded, as soon as that hits the user's desktop or is brought into the user's environment, the owner becomes the user. Is the user going to be part of the trusted owners list? The answer is going to be no, so the executables are blocked. Again, we're not concerned at all of what the executable is. We're not concerned of whether it's a zero-day virus, something that's going to be released in the future. Unlike things like uh, antivirus software, which is a blacklist approach, probably the least secure approach because everything in, within your antivirus software, they need to know every single virus out there. This takes a different approach, a more of a proactive approach rather than a reactive approach and just looks at who the user is, or sorry, who has actually introduced the executable. If it's been brought into the environment or installed into the environment by an administrator, we'll allow the executable to be run by users. If it's introduced by the user, it's blocked.